everybody, we're live, and I'm joined tonight by Octopimp and FG Squared. Hello, Hello. everybody. Hello, good evening. All right, well, let's start with some introductions. Uh, tonight's topic is going to be all about building wells and the soap industry. Uh, let's start with Octo. Octo, could you tell everybody where to find you on the internet? And uh, also, when and how you got into Dwarf Fortress? Um, hi everybody, I'm Octo. Uh, you can find me everywhere at Octopimp. If you Google it, uh, something I did will probably come up. Um, uh, when did I get started with Dwarf Fortress? I think I got started with Dwarf Fortress uh, reading about Boat Murdered on Something Awful. That's like ah. the first. <laughs> that's like the first time, like when it was happening. Yeah. Like while it was being posted. Um and I was like, this can't this can't be a real game. This has to be made up. And uh it was a real game and I started playing it. I when was that? It was like two thousand eight, two thousand nine? Something sometime around then. Um so yeah, that's when I started playing. And I've been playing off and on ever since then. It took a long break. Uh but Steam version made me come back, so here I am. Cool, cool. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And FG, you're newer to the game. Um, would you like to tell people where they can find you on the internet? And also how you got into Dwarf Fortress? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I'm FG Squared. I go by, you know, shortened version FG. Um, you can find everything that I do on FG Squared.tv. It's probably easiest. It just has links to everywhere. And I have also been aware of Dwarf Fortress for a very long time. I did also in the you know in the dark ages of the internet stumble upon bo boat murdered and enjoyed reading about it and that sort of stuff i briefly dabbled 10 11 years ago but i i am i'm a snob and you know the the ascii graphics for some reason i just my eyes get like crossed i don't know it, it doesn't work for me for some reason i don't know why it's not because it's ugly it's just my eyes can't do it so i I've, I've always wanted to play and i tried but it just couldn't i just it didn't so with the steam version it was perfect time to like really dig in and uh, have lots of fun mm -hmm. all right thank you both uh so we are gonna start today by let's see we're gonna go to uh, Octo, we're going to go to your fortress first. Let me pull Ooh. your fortress up. Okay. Here we go. Oh, All right. Yeah. So, could we start with a fortress tour from you? Um... Sure. Um, this is a fortress that was requested by my chat, and they wanted me to be in a hostel, um, like by a uh, haunted environment so, yeah, <laughs> death and destruction I, yeah As I chapter. Really, yeah this is this is like uh this is five years in you uh -huh. or 105 is where we are so we've been i've been basically scraping by as best i can um trying to keep morale up but every time they go outside <laughs> they just get sad uh it's not right now but it rains toxic sludge uh. so um they just get sick and sad when they walk outside. Um, so this is the entrance. I just made a simple one room entrance um, right by my trading depot. Um, here is my um, pasture inside because I once the caves opened, I wanted to move all my animals inside because they also get sad when they're outside. Um, <laughs> uh, this is my farm with my farming stations, uh, my military barracks. This is I think it is. I don't know what I was going to build over here. I have no idea. Um, this is, is this right? <laughs> this feel right. Now that I'm looking at it, is this the right one? No, this can't be the right one. Is this the right one? This isn't the right one. Is this the right one? I don't remember. Anyway, here is my... No, this is the right one. Here's a... Uh, um, these are my um, offices manager and bookkeeper? For, like, for my manager's yeah. office so he can do it for the stockpile. Um, here's my, uh, my rooms. I always give my dwarfs, uh, an extra square. 
Uh -huh. um, I just like it. I like giving them more space. It, if I need to upgrade their room to uh, be nicer, uh, they always like having a little more space, I find. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, because some people do the just the one by two. Yeah. Like the, just the, the hallway, and then they put the, the... But I think it's more aesthetically pleasing to have these little pods. Uh -huh. That's just a personal preference, though. It's actually, I think, less efficient, but whatever. I agree. Um, I agree. Dwarves are people too. They deserve nice bedrooms. It's true. I agree. It's um, uh, it's a big and easy morale boost to make bigger rooms. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You've got all this space mm -hmm. in the fortress. So mm -hmm. yeah, I do a three yeah, by it... three room. Oh wow. Yeah, you, I find you're not hard pressed for space, especially if you have you know like look at all this. I'm never gonna fit all this. Indeed. So I do the yeah, I do and we've got like a hundred Z levels to to work with as yeah. well. We're not short yeah, on yeah. space. No, it's true. If I need to make another dormitory, I can. Um, then uh, these are my meeting rooms. Um, I feel like is this the right? Hold on, I feel like I'm going crazy. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. No, this is right. Is this right? Any of this is right? Mine. Okay. And do you want me to go down to the well? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Uh, the, sorry. I feel like this is. The, I thought this was the right fortress. I think it is. Anyway, um, the well is here, down in the caves. Uh huh. Um, the reason I put it down in the caves, I put three of them just so that there's not a traffic jam. Sure. But um, the reason I did that is because the only other water source is up here, which is a shallow stream. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, frozen at the moment, though. Yeah, it's yeah. frozen. Yeah, it's frozen. So I, they can't access it during the winter. Um, So uh, I was constantly looking for new water sources, especially if a dwarf gets sick or needs to go to the doctor's office and they need water. Um, they had no water when it was frozen, so that really sucked. Uh -huh. Um, So I built these wells. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and caverns are can be dangerous places, especially in an evil biome. Yeah, so what I did is I walled off everything. Mm -hmm. um, I built these walls so that the only way that they could possibly be accessed is over the water, which limits the amount of creatures that can come into the Yeah, place. yeah. Um, anything that flies, which I actually think there is. What are the giant monsters that come out of the caverns? <laughs> Have you got a forgotten beast in there? Yeah, there's a forgotten beast somewhere that flies, but we're not we're gonna worry about him right now. I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna think about him at the moment. Oh, that's an interesting the child there with the rainbow and the black eyes and the green skin. This um one? Yeah. What's with I mean, her? Play make believe in the cave, no big deal. Is she coated with something? Uh, or is she... Uh, is she a vampire dwarf? I don't think so. Or is she just covered in goo? I think she's just covered in... I think she's just covered in disgusting goo from being outside. Uh, if you have a look at her items, it'll tell you if she's coated with something. Uh, uh, yeah, horse blood. Yep. Oh, that's right. It, uh, no, oh, no, no. That was the other one. I did make another one where it rained dwarf blood constantly. That one was rough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I had to abandon that one. Um, I think she's just in a coating of blood. I think there was a fight down here. Yeah. yeah there she's coated with the gore of some sort of forgotten beast, I think, there. A coating uh, of a really per per perplexed wave, the sunken something or other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's basically where yeah. we're at with this one. Yeah, uh, the sunken drinks, forgotten beast <laughs> blood. Yeah, I think my militia messed up something down here. Yeah. So yeah. Well, it looks like you managed to take it out. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we have any. Oh, hold on. Uh. Where is... I know, I know there's a Forgotten Beast somewhere. Yeah, it'd be onto could, others yeah. if you've got one. Yeah, but I think he might, I think we might not be able to see him right now. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think he's yeah he's hiding somewhere in the caverns because I remember because he's flying and that's bad. Mm. Um, mm. but he's like, he's like flying around somewhere, but it's okay. Well, well, I'll deal with it when I have to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically where I'm at. All right. So that's uh, that's one way to um, to get a well down so a well is important for newer players uh joining us the reason why you need a well um even if you've got lots and lots of booze you your dwarves still need water if a dwarf is injured and they're taken to hospital there's two things that a uh, hospital, hospital needs water for one is to wash a wound before it's sutured so that will prevent a wound from becoming infected uh, and the other is when a dwarf is in hospital and they're lying in bed uh, either waiting to be treated or they're recovering then they will be brought drink uh, in buckets and the only drink that they'll be brought is water so the orderlies bring uh, water in buckets for the patients in your hospital if there's no access to water then the people in hospital will die of dehydration um, unless you remove your hospital zone and they're mobile so if you've got somebody who's on a traction bench or who are immobile or unconscious they will die in hospital if they can't walk to a walk to the alcohol store unless you have a water source so water source is really important um, and the other thing that um, that's important for water is um, the ability to for the dwarfs to wash themselves as well so if they get um, if they get something on them even if it's just rain <laughs> they like to be able to wash the rain off themselves um they'll go to a well and clean themselves of any contaminants so if they've got blood on them or any kind of gore so particularly important in octo's uh, fortress here if it's raining sludge or um you can have all kinds of nasty stuff that falls from the sky in uh, in some of these things oh yeah same goes for prisoners as well good point uh from chat there uh if you've got a prisoner in a jail then they'll be brought uh water to drink as well from the well if you don't have a well but you have a river then the dwarves will go to a river um to access water if the only water that you have is a stagnant pool they will use that at a push i think it's been a i presume that's still the case it used to be the case in some of the old versions um i haven't tested that since the steam version i haven't had the need to but stagnant water is more likely to infect your dwarfs and is uh and and they're not very happy with it either. <laughs> it doesn't give them happy thoughts. All right, I'm gonna switch um, from. Hold on, oh. I think that was oh. the wrong fortress. Ah. That's okay. We still showed off the well, but yeah, switch yeah, yeah. over. I'm gonna I'm gonna poke around in my save games because I have like seven fortresses going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> um, nice. I'm gonna show. Um, my uh a different form of well here this is a well that's fed from a river to a reservoir and the the type of well that worry a lot of new players when they start building it because there's uh, because of the risk of flooding your fortress so i'm gonna show how to how to do that how you make sure that your well doesn't flood your fortress uh, when you're feeding it from something like a river so here is um my well sump so if you're building uh if you're 
building a well from scratch rather than tapping into an existing source. You want to make sure that you've got at least two layers deep. I think this one is three. Oh, in fact, it's four. Mm. Five. Okay, this one's <laughs> a five layer deep well. I know here the, the river freezes um, more than six months of the year. So I, I made sure that all of my reservoirs were big and deep so that we'd never run out of water. And uh, so I dug out this pit here. Uh, just by channeling down, there is a staircase in the corner here. Uh, you can see it on the description bar that pops up. Uh, muddy chair to upward staircase. Mm. And I like to put a staircase in the pit of the, um, down to the bottom of the pit of the well. So that if a dwarf falls down the well for any reason, they can still climb up. They're not going to drown down there. Um... The yeah, dwarves are known for their ability to fall down wells, especially children. <laughs> uh, yeah, so very good at that. Yeah, giving them a way back up out the well, uh, it's quite handy, and that helps in the construction as well. So the layer below the well itself. So if this is the, we'll call it the the well level. Well level minus one. So one layer down. This is as high as I want the water to come. And the water here is coming through a diagonal. And that, uh, that's important. So that resets the water pressure. Uh, if water comes through a diagonal, it will stop rising. It won't go any higher than this level, no matter mm. what we did with this. So that's why the water isn't coming up the stairs. Of course, the, the well itself is just a hole in the ground. So, the um, probably the most common um, newbie mistake with building a well is to dig out this pit and then just connect it orthogonally um, so that it comes through on a straight edge either on the corner there or straight through like this uh, if you do that then there's nothing to stop the water pressure and the water will continue to rise until it gets to the height of the original source so if I dug this bit here then the well would flood through here and just looking at the mini map the water is the water source is higher than this so it would flood this entire level of the fortress um it would go up the stairs uh we're still lower than a river so it would in it would flood this entire level of the fortress um we're still lower than the river uh so it would come up the stairs here and it would flood this level <laughs> Um, and this level um, yeah it would flood this level as well until we get to here this is the um, this is the level of the river where I'm taking the feed so this is where the water would stop rising so the only bit of my fortress that wouldn't be flooded would be um, a blinds model railway and um, the farms on the surface, everything else would be flooded. So, and once it starts flooding, unless you've got a door on your well, doors will stop floods. So, if you're if you're uncertain, um, it's always a good idea to just put a put some doors on your well room. Um, do you have to lock them for the flood to stop, or do they just naturally stop? They'll just naturally stop. As long as nobody walks through them, it'll be fine. Mm, mm, mm. So... <laughs> you got a room full of water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You would yeah. then have a fish pond. You know, there's... Um, yeah. if, if something's gone wrong, and it's going to flood, then... Yeah, th that room would then be dead to us, because if anyone opens the door... Um, it's going to flood everything all the way up to the up to the river level but um 
yeah, uh, I'm going to remove that before somebody decides that they can reach it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but having having the river fed down through uh, through this tunnel and then passing it through a diagonal means that it's reset the, the height of the water. So the new water source becomes where that diagonal is there. So it'll never rise higher than this level. Now, if I went down to the bottom of my well um, and we took a, um, a, a, a tunnel out here and then put a staircase up to here for some reason and then dug a room out there. Um, this would flood because the water would travel along there. Mm -hmm. um, this the is, yeah, go up the staircase. Uh, this is still below the new water source level. So that would flood. And anything up to this level uh, would flood because it would the water would try to return to the same height as that diagonal. So the, the diagonal is a really important, really powerful way of um, making sure that your water stays at the level where you want it. Now, because I've got a biome here that freezes a lot, what I did, so I, I design and dig my system from the inside to the outside. I dug out this well. Um, I then sent the dwarfs along a tunnel here, digging out this tunnel, and then got them to dig out a reservoir here. And I put drawbridges with little passages off the side so that if ever I want to access the water in the future, I've all I need to do is to just come behind here um, and access it from there. So I could dig, have I got something around here? Let me just zoom out a bit. Supposing I wanted to, I don't know, maybe I'm building a mist generator or something like that. Uh, if I wanted to pump water from from this reservoir, um, let's draw a staircase from here, let's say up to there, and then we could go along to there and then channel in the roof. That will put a hole. Um, over the entrance to the fortress and I'd have to make some sort of drain for it as well but because this is lower than the river this I could dig all of that and my dwarfs would be safe they wouldn't be drowning because I've got a drawbridge there mm. so we can build the all of this, uh, all of these water mechanisms do whatever we want behind. And then once we're all set up, then I'll pull the drawbridge and let the water through. Uh, so, yeah, I put in and I've made use of that. One of these connections I've later set up. It, so in, mm -hmm. in this version, do you have to use something to connect pressure plates to drawbridges? Like, do you have to... Or because the way I, when I was messing around with engineering stuff, you used to be able to just make a pressure plate and then connect it to whatever you wanted with like no actual physical connection. You, uh, you just need mechanisms to connect the pressure plates to a thing, um, okay. whether it's a, a drawbridge or traps or anything. Yeah, because I used to use a pressure plate with a minimum and maximum water level on it, uh -huh. and then connected that to a drawbridge as like a floodgate so if a water level got too high um i had it close the drawbridge or uh and then if i if the water level got too low uh i would well it was it was with um 
floodgates on a river, I would reroute the river. So that's how I use like to water control if something got like it was like, as a safety mechanism. Uh huh. Because I rerouted it to make a moat, but then the problem was then it just flooded. It flooded like the front of my fortress. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, then yeah. I used a, a pressure plate uh, under the moat. Went, so I emptied the moat and oh, then nice. put a pressure plate there and then said, oh, well, if it gets to water level seven on this la layer, uh -huh. then I'll close the the um, the floodgate, right? And then if it gets lower, then I'll open it so that it doesn't dry out completely. So that's how I sort of use it as like a safety mechanism. Uh-huh. Um... Let's see, it would be under traps, pressure plate, so it would be water triggers at yeah. a water depth of, mm -hmm. say, three. Right. And, yeah, then you just need a, a mechanism. Yeah, and then you could just do it to link that to the And then the link that to whichever. Yep. Mm, oh, yeah, nice. whatever you want. It could be anything. Yeah. Cool. That's clever. I'll have to yeah. use that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can use that to as like a say as like sort of like a safety backup, you know, yeah. you build that first yeah. and then if if it starts to flood, you say, "Oh, crap." And then you just shuts the door or whatever and then you can deal whatever you can do however you want to do it. Ooh. I'm just thinking that would be nice. One thing, I did have a fortress where I wanted a river flowing f just for aesthetic reasons. Um, mm -hmm. Just because I wanted a river that flowed through the center of my dining room. I had an underground dining mm. room, um, mm -hmm. like kind of quite deep down. And then it flowed off the map. Um, might have flowed down into the caverns and then off the map, I forget. But I wanted to keep the water level quite shallow. Um, so that the dwarfs could paddle through it and wash their feet if they had anything on their feet. I think I might have had a dining room on one side and a tavern on the other. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, they would walk between them uh, through this shallow water. And trying to keep the water at a shallow level was actually quite difficult. Um, mm -hmm. I never thought of using a pressure plate. Another place yeah. as well where that yeah. would be so useful. You yeah so if it triggered then it would just i mean it gets a little annoying because i mean from a conceptual standpoint because the floodgate is constantly opening and closing or drawbridge or whatever have you was just constantly opening and closing because you know the water as it's evaporating is going down and then opens up and then it floods in and then it's closing and then it's opening and then it's closing and then it's yeah opening. yeah but you know it works it, yeah. it definitely does work as a as a literal floodgate to just you know mm. keep the water at the level that you want it to Oh. Yeah, just oh sorry. I just I just wanted to say just automating that process is just convenient as well. Oh, yeah. Like incredibly convenient. Not having to remember that oh I need to like check my well and see if there's enough water in it. because mm -hmm. uh, it's just automated, it's really good. Yep. Yeah, yep, indeed. It's all um where that's gonna come in useful for me. Over here, I've got a perpetual water power machine. Mm -hmm. So the pumps are sucking water from, well, these muddy spots here. Because uh, the pumps are really, really powerful. And they draw the water to zero um, in front of the pump. So the pump is pumping from the level below. It pumps the water to the back here. And then because the water at the back's got nowhere to go, it flows over the top of the water wheel and then falls back down through the grate here. So it's falling down mm. either side of the, the muddy bit. And the pump is, it's very efficient. It doesn't take much power to power a pump. And the water wheels are incredibly powerful. So the one pump attached to two water wheels produces a tremendous amount of power. It produces a lot more mm -hmm. power than it uses to run. So it powers itself and produces an excess of power, which I then take from above on this gear assembly. Um, this system is powering a, uh, if we go down here, uh, we've got a screw pump stack. Mm -hmm. We've got a pump stack that is pulling magma up from way, way down in the magma sea. Um, but there's spare power on the system. 
there's 1200 only needs 800 i built this large enough so that if i wanted to power anything else i've got excess power in the system without needing to expand this just yet right right don't know what i might need it for but you know <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> what, we'll, is, uh, what all do you would you use power for other than pumps uh could be more more traps it could be mm -hmm. mine carts it Sure. Could be yeah, it could be any any number of things. I never know until I sure, sure. Yeah. Um never know quite what I'm gonna come up with. <laughs> yeah, well or especially with this fortress because I've got guests coming on um on the Kit Fox streams. Never know what somebody might want some extra power for. Um but uh, yeah, the the only downside to these, um, the cold dwarven reactors, is we can't keep the bottom layer full. So if this was at seven of seven the whole time, then when the water, when the the pumps pump the water back here, and then mm -hmm. it flows across the water wheel, it would flood. It just floods because it wouldn't yeah. have anywhere to go down here. Mm -hmm. So it does generate a bit of mist and it, it does start to evaporate. So anytime you see water drop to a water level of one, it begins to evaporate. Mm -hmm. And mm. so slowly this will drain itself. Uh, and that speeds up as the water level, as you get more ones around the place, the more ones you get, the faster it starts to evaporate. Mm -hmm. um, I could set this up pressure plate down here yeah. mm -hmm. um possibly over here in the corner to say when this drops below three um mm -hmm. i think i would put that on floodgates rather than a drawbridge yeah <clears throat> do it on a floodgate and then once yeah. it fills up then it just closes the floodgate again yeah, yeah yeah and you'll completely automate the process indeed yep that's such a good idea and i think i'd set it to three as well because this is a nice comfortable level here yeah, absolutely. Mm, I really like that. Yeah, I'll, once this drains itself, I'll retrofit that. Mm -hmm. um, not now, obviously, because there's... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get some drowned dwarfs if I try and do that now. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but back to my well. Do you know, I learned something with every single stream. <laughs> I've learned so much doing these streams. And just have them um, talking to people. Uh, it's amazing how, for all of the the, I don't know, between all of the people I, I've spoken to in these Kit Fox streams, we must have hundreds and hundreds of years of gameplay between us all. And I think. <laughs> Everybody, every time we've done something, everybody has left having learned something that they didn't know before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, so back to my reservoir. Uh, this is the tunnel that leads to the well. It's closed at the moment because I was, um, I didn't want to drain my well when I was filling up um, the uh the the water wheels down there uh, usually this one would be open and that one would be closed uh my reservoir is also quite deep so this is just like the sump at the bottom of my well it's the same idea somewhere mm -hmm. ah there it is there's a staircase just there so this is how the dwarfs dug this out they went oops there we go up to here um and then across here and then what they did was to dig down um so there's an up downstairs there and then they went across and then they went up again and that upward staircase takes us uh well it took us almost to the river uh, we came alongside the river there used to be a tile just there uh, so I got them to dig all of that out and they went just below the surface and right next door to the river, uh, but they didn't connect into the river. So I was able to dig all of that out without anybody flooding. And now the purpose of this U-bend here, 
uh, is there are plenty of creatures, especially in my neck of the woods. I'm in an area that is full of undead creatures. I've got 32 necromancer towers in the vicinity. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, it's actually a calm surrounding. It's a really benign area that we've set up in, except for the neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> the neighborhood's gone to pot <laughs> and uh, and the thing about corpses is, is they don't need oxygen to breathe so mm -hmm. if they're trying to find a way into my fortress and i've turtled against them then they can just jump in the river um come down the staircase here and then along here but they can't get through that floor grate there mm. Uh, um, because that's above the head of anything trying to get in, um, weird beasts also don't need to breathe. And weird beasts can break doors. They can break down doors. They can break down floodgates. Can they break doors? Yeah. Can they? Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, lo I, I locked one in a room for Same. like years. Oh, they can. Um, I can show you. Whoa! Have I put the doors. God, back? maybe I got lucky. So is that just when they get angry? They or if they can, if they can see a way out, um, then yeah, they're gonna break down the doors. Wow. Mm. They won't necessarily do it straight away, but yes, um, okay. weird beasts are building oh. destroyers. Yeah, because I, maybe because I locked them in a room where, like, they couldn't see anywhere else out. Uh, they have no object permanence, I guess. But, um, <laughs> basically, yeah, basically, like, one of, I, I got it down because I had a weird lizard epidemic. So what happened was I locked, um, I killed all the other weird lizards, and then I found the one that I had left, and I locked him in the room, um, until I could dispose of him through some means. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. He, never, he never broke out, so maybe he just didn't know that there was nothing else outside of that room. And also because they don't need to eat, uh, he didn't starve. So I didn't know that they were building stairs. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, if they, mm. if they are trying to path to you, mm -hmm. and they're trying to mm. path through that door, if you lock the door, they'll just break down the door. Mm -mm -mm. Now... Possibly if they weren't trying to pass through the door or you've put a wall behind the door or something like that, then maybe it takes them longer. I mm. have got, I've got a fortress that had um, three weird creatures in. Um, mm -hmm. There was one that I had trapped behind locked doors after it had changed back. Uh, and then I walled behind the doors. It took it about a year, and then it decided it was just going to destroy the doors. But it hung out in that room for maybe a year. Mm -hmm. The oh. other two are a different type of weird creature. Um, they they were two of my dwarfs who got bitten by a weird beast, and they went to hospital. Um, my hospital had a similar design to the one I've got here. Mm -hmm. um, where I, my hospital beds are behind a door that I can lock. And then I have a little space to be able to put a wall in behind the door. Uh, so that if, uh, if someone's bitten by a weird creature, they get taken to bed. I then lock them in to, not so much to lock them in, but to lock the doctors out. Um, oh sure yeah <laughs> and then um and then a wall in behind the um uh behind the door so that if they if they break down the door they can't get through the wall mm -hmm. um now the the two weird creatures so they were two dwarfs that were bitten taken to hospital walled in and they're still there they haven't broken down the doors yet mm -hmm. um now they were never trying to pass out through those doors. 
so they weren't chasing a dwarf down or something so mm -hmm. maybe that's why they and they've been in there for for a long time uh, mm -hmm. never tried breaking it down i'm sure eventually they'll start tantruming because you know they're bored <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> they're locked in this tiny room they'll just start breaking the furniture including the door eventually um mm -hmm. but um yeah quarantine hospitals <laughs> I just kicked them out of my furnace after uh, a furnace. What? Uh, <laughs> no, I ki I just kicked them out of my fortress after they turned back. So let other other people just deal with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to deal with weird beasts. But um, yeah, the problem with that is you are then sending the curse out into the world. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> and that curse may come back to bite you because uh, literally. literally. <laughs> Yeah, um, because you'll be, you're infecting more people, which means possibly, I mean, it might be that somebody does kill the weird beast once it's out in the world, but of course the, the story of the world is continuing beyond your fortress. Uh, mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. if some, if the weird beast bites a bunch of people, then you've got even more people infected out in the world. And instead of one problem, you might have another five problems now that <laughs> could turn up at your fortress at a later date. So I, I do try to capture and deal with the weird creatures, um, if I can. Uh, but yes, so that's why I have this U-Bend here. Uh, weird creatures and other building destroyers that don't need oxygen to breathe can't break through the floor grate above their head so anything above hatch covers floor grates anything that's above their head um if i had a door here at the top of the stairs they could break through that but they couldn't break through the hatch above their head so if they can't stand next to it they can't break it they can only break things that are in front of their face or below their feet they can't break things above their head so yeah you bend here uh, so I, I had my dwarves dig all of this out so it was all completely dry. All of the things were put in place, the drawbridges were in uh, and linked. The grate was in, the sump was built. So I got everything built. And then the very last thing that I did... Oh, and I drew the drawbridges down at the bottom, raised the drawbridges down at the bottom of the reservoir where I wanted to keep them... Uh, dry at the far side so the very th last thing that I did was to come up onto the surface and channel this part here right there so I just put because um, I had my up down staircase here and the river wall was um, along here so there was water there water there and this was solid so by mm -hmm. channeling that piece there, it made a connection uh, between the river and the downward staircase. And then it, uh, it flooded, that whole system flooded the reservoir and went down and filled my well. And every, where are we now? Every, I think it's early summer when the river defrosts and it comes and fills up um, my reservoir is usually a little bit empty by that point because uh, we'll be using water for various things uh, it just comes and refills the reservoir at that point and if nice. my well's been drained then I say this is usually open uh, yeah we just refill the well so that's how I've built this uh, this well system i've used this in many fortresses um what i'll do i'll swap over to another fortress where i've got a similar setup but it's in a much smaller environment um i'll get that loading and then fg can we swap over to you and we'll have a look at, at your fortress you've been using yeah, sure. an aquifer for a while haven't you yep yes um, indeed exactly that i'll just get this other fortress loading Mm-hmm. All right. Because, unfortunately, I can't get your screen up and still see my screen, too. No, that's all right. <laughs> Just 
tell me when to get started. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I'll let you know. Um, yeah, this is getting to be a bit of a big world now. So it takes a, a little moment just to save. <laughs> as soon as it starts loading the other one. Oh, in fact, the other one that I'm going to, which has got a bit of a... It's, it's We're working with small spaces. It's the one with the weird beasts in it. Ah. I don't have the... The weird beast that broke down the doors, I don't have it on the map anymore. I um, I should hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to let it go during a siege to see if um, if the sieges would deal with it, but I think it got off the map before they attacked it. Can angry dwarfs break levers? Uh, yeah, they can. <laughs> Definitely. And Napsa, thank you so much for the raid. <laughs> Dwarfs know the important rule of Minecraft. Never dig straight up. Except that they can do that too. Hmm. Well, they know of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they don't tend to follow a lot of rules. <laughs> um, Plane of Dawning? Yes. No. That's the one we've just been looking at. Ageless Realm? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, that right. Is. Let me come over to Oh, oh no. I oh, think we What happened? Oh no. Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Oh, did you lose my stream? Yes. Ah, I think yeah, so, I because it's Oops. a different yeah, all yeah. good. <laughs> no, no worries. I'll bring you back in a second. Let me. Um, yeah, my um, my Discord all just went blank for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you dropped out of the call for a second, but now you're back, so yeah. all good. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Uh, FG, I'm going to switch over to yours now. Yeah, That's sure. okay. Yeah, absolutely. I am ready and uh, good to go. So, um,. I have not played that much Dwarf Fortress. I've played uh -huh. about 120 ish hours of the Steam version. So this was very much still a let's figure this out and try things and learn sure. things fortress. Um, we are, because um, uh, this is the second, third fort in this world. Mm -hmm. And uh, my last fort, everybody got really angry at me because there was a forgotten beast on my world map two years outside that kind of killed everything um so all the humans are very angry at me as you can see maybe over there and down here that's they're all angry at my uh, faction um because of that so i settled over here on this little island where nobody can visit us which is great <laughs> <laughs> which is up in the tundra so um just like yours yeah no n mostly frozen water so there there are some pools as you can see like there are some pools here and there but most for most of the year it's frozen there's also this this funny shenanigans that happened because the fortress before that we had some fps issues because um there was this uh, friendly necromancer <laughs> that met my um oh, corpse field <laughs> all of that. Corpses! <laughs> Sorry. Um, they got busy um, resurrecting a lot of people. So to save our FPS a little bit, we turned temperature off, which I forgot to turn back on for this map. So um, the first couple of years, this, this Ford was just perma-frozen. And for some reason, um, the snow turned into plum wine. So oh. all of these blue mm. pools on the world... <laughs> That's all plum wine. I call hacks. <laughs> um, so mm. my animals that were grazing outside, they were all covered in plum wine. They're now safe <laughs> underneath this giant glass roof, which is glorious. But uh, they're all my, my lovely animals down here now. They're all safe. I don't think... I don't think they're covered in... Um, in in uh plum wine anymore but basically all of my animals were just covered oh. in plum wine like everything <laughs> like there was plum wine everywhere even on the inside of their eyelids it was it was it was great yeah it was great but now i have an indoor indoor ranch and you know all, all's good 
Um, but yeah, to get started outside, we have just, um, you know, a little wall and we've got a little tower here with like a roof. So, and you know, like, um, embrasures so we can shoot out at people that come and try to do, us, uh, you know, do us harm. We've got some, uh, draw bridges and some traps to have fun with. We got a trading station outside, uh, and all of that, you know, um, normal stuff. Also, as you can see, no river on this map at all there's no there's no running water or anything like that uh -huh. so i had to get creative with the water because most of the time it was frozen we have got our well one of our hospitals up here a little bit of farming going on got our you know uh ranchers doing their ranching stuff butcher and all that sort of stuff we've got one barracks up here to help with defense at the top uh and then we go down down uh, you can already see some water shenanigans happening here. <laughs> <laughs> I um, so uh, I did two things. I did a self-powered mist generator in this board, mm -hmm. as well as the well, uh, all powered by the aquifer, like or like filled with the aquifer over here. So all of this is, um, you know, uh, all of this is, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, aquifer, all of this over here right. has water in it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just dug it out, made long corridors and just let it fill up. Um, and so we have two things. Obviously, we have the well over here, which gets fed with that reservoir. And we just have a floodgate that we open periodically. And uh, as you can see, there is a pool of blood and a pool of plum wine. Because, <laughs> you know, got to wash that plum wine off. That's <laughs> how it is. And um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a too deep reservoir below the well that's like nice and full and that lasts us very long like it la it lasts like very 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 long like yeah. several years until i have to like open the flat gate again and like um you know refill it and we use that for obviously for the hospital upstairs as you can see with all the blood and you know cleaning off the plum wine and that sort of stuff and then i made this giant contraption for the self-powered uh mist generator that is in my tavern uh-huh uh with all the bedrooms around it and um we've got some offices down here like mayor and dining rooms and all that sort of stuff all the fancy smanchy things uh -huh. i also do three by three bedrooms in yeah. this one as you can see because mm -hmm. you know dwarves are people too indeed uh, you know they are so the way the self-powered um mist generator works is obviously we've got the water coming in here and as you described we do have some loss because mist appears and that then also evaporates that sort of yeah. stuff so we periodically have to refill it a little bit um but basically the water falls down through this this one little hole up here hits the wonderful statue obviously it's a golden statue of a river uh -huh. otter i mean it oh, has to be nice. right <laughs> it's on, on brand uh mm -hmm. hits that uh creates a mist in our tavern uh and then the excess water falls down through the grates falls down two levels where it then goes down a long corridor to the side where the pumps sit over here with uh the water wheels that power it and then it just go it just goes up a couple of levels using um you know yeah just mechanisms and and uh uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Axles. There we go. Yeah. Axles and things and all that sort of stuff. And then it just goes round and round and round and round. And um, there was only a tiny flooding incident once. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's okay. Like we had yeah. a little bit of flooding here um, when I when when the wheels stopped and I was like I was adding more water at the top. The wheels for some reason stopped. Uh. I don't know why. And it's never happened again after that since then. I don't know. It was very strange. But um, down here is also my, well, some storage uh, production, more storage below the production, of course. Uh, and then temples, tombs, and other things. And then not just really a flood. Yeah, it was just, it's just a little bit. It was just a little bit muddy. Exactly. And then we go very far down into the caverns where we did um cabin shenanigans with yeah. wait where is it there we go yeah and then we have a you know as i said started to dabble so we dabbled using magma stuff down here in the magma sea mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't yet start pumping it like you know up because yeah. that's that's like the next thing i need to tackle 
Mm -hmm. But uh, we have we have very funny caverns on this because basically uh, our cavern layer oh. and uh, like cavern layer one, two, and three are all on top of each other. <laughs> oh right, really so close together. Huge. Yeah, yeah, it's like there's like one layer in between all of them. Oh See, wow. See, like there's this one. Stop. Next one, and then it just goes to the bottom of this one. And one layer in between, really and the next one starts. Well. Yeah, and it's really deep. Yeah, it's really really deep. It's very odd, but. Um, no, this was a really fun fortress and we had lots of fun with the plum wine and all that sort of stuff and yeah so the way i did my well was like it was really easy the way i did it like noob friendly because uh -huh. i i uh channeled i just channeled down yeah. twice i made this bigger one channeled down and then channeled down a smaller rectangle inside of that one mm -hmm. um yes yeah, so and you then can climb the ramps to get out again exactly exactly so they're fine put a floor down put the well down um dug this area out of course where you know the water was slowly trickling out but like light aquifer you know it's not it's not a lot like water it really you know you won't you won't get flooded like immediately or anything like that with a light aquifer it's just yeah. it just trickles so we put the wall in, put that floodgate in and then we just let it flow into the water and we have uh, the floodgate control all the way behind here but all the way over here actually i think where did i put the floodgate control oh no it's over here but technically ah, yeah. if this were to ever break we have a wall there and a wall there a uh, wall the it door does. and a yeah. door there yeah so it you know it's it's safe ish and then the same here we have this one this lever controlling that floodgate but because there's walls in there Nobody can get in there. We haven't had anybody fall in. Nobody drowns. So all in all, I think it was a pretty successful setup of yeah, uh, yeah. experimenting with water for the first time. And um, if I'm, you know, if, if, you know, I as a newbie can do it, everybody can do it. Because it's really not that, not that scary, especially if you don't use flowing water. <laughs> <laughs> well, though, to be fair, like aquifer water is still flowing, right? This is not stagnant water. It's yeah um, so this is safe to drink right it's not like mm -hmm. as you said the the stale water yeah it's not stagnant yeah exactly it's just not as fast flowing as a, a river or a brook or a stream would be <laughs> indeed but yeah no it was was a very good mm. very fun fortress for learning and things for sure that's lovely yeah. thank you so yeah another yeah. easy way to um to get your hands on water so yeah, i've absolutely. up until now i've been advising um, new players to avoid light aquifer or to avoid any aquifers but especially the heavy aquifers but even mm -hmm. the light aquifers um just because trying to work out how to get enough food and drink for your dwarfs while still trying to work out how to get past the light aquifer um is a lot to learn on your first fortress but certainly once you get past that stage and you know how to build you know how to dig uh light aquifer yeah just has makes a lot of things somewhat easier <laughs> it makes it definitely convenient because it's basically a safe source of water where you know nobody can like come into the fortress that way like mm -hmm. you could maybe with like as you said like you know creatures that can swim through a river you need yeah. to like you don't have to do any precautions there and you can you know there's not really any risk of flooding uh your base once you just start like slowly tapping into the light aquifer yeah i i, I have to say as a new player it hasn't really been bad for me to deal with light aquifers except like the couple of maps where the light aquifer was just like 20 layers deep that was that was right. not difficult it was just really annoying to be like i just want to set up a room so people can sleep there's just <laughs> water <laughs> water everywhere yeah just Indeed. everywhere yeah but it's definitely definitely doable yeah mm. well for thank sure. you thank you very much for that fortress tour um yeah let's uh I'll pop over to this other fortress that i've got here let me just move that over there 
and uh, yeah so this is my tiny tower fortress here um, I'll just zoom out a bit uh, if I go to the surface uh, this is a one by one embark so ooh, what you <laughs> see is what you get <laughs> Yeah, wow, that is tiny. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, and uh, it, it's a fun challenge. Um, it, it makes you play quite a bit differently to how you normally play because you don't get much, well, you haven't got much land to play with. Uh, yeah. But also the moment an enemy arrives, or, like if you're going to be sieged, everything's a surprise. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You don't Ooh. get any notice at all that there's an enemy arriving. Um, are we under siege at the moment? No, apparently not. What's fighting? <laughs> Things downstairs fighting. Are we in winter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in training season. Um, only one of my weird beasts transformed. Uh, but uh, yes, I've used the same system here. If you're if you're doing a one by one embark, um, I would recommend staying away from aquifers because you don't have the space um, mm. to you don't have the space to tap them, and you don't have the space to avoid them or deal with them or um, work around them at all. Um, but make sure that you've got some some flowing water because there's no guarantee that you'll get water in the caverns either uh on such a small tile of course yeah yeah um yeah you'd be lucky in fact to... i've played a couple of um one by one in box because they are they are a fun challenge um and i think i've only hit i think i've done it three times and i've only hit cavern water once and even that was just a clip on the edge of the map. Uh, so, yeah. If I go down, I'll show you where I had the Weir Beast for a start. So, I had the Weir Beast trapped in a room here. Um, yeah, this is the entrance into the fortress. It uses the same, because I, I didn't have any walls or... There was no security up on the surface for a long time. Um, so to get up and down from the surface, I'm using the same U-bend technique where there's hatch covers um, to above the heads of anything entering the fortress. This leads to the surface, this staircase here. And then they, so they go down the stairs, past my guard dogs, and then up through these hatch covers here. So I can, if I lock those hatch covers, my fortress is secure. Mm. Um, and uh, so first thing I knew about the weird beast was the dog spotted it. It come down through the hatch covers and come across the dogs. So I locked these hatch covers here to stop it from getting any further in. And uh, it killed my poor dogs, unfortunately. I think one of mm. the dogs, I might have been able to let one of the dogs through. Um, so then I had this weir beast uh, trapped in the corridor. I locked both hatch covers, um, both the entrance and the exit, and just trapped it in here. Uh, and when it turned back, it was a dwarven child. So huh. I, uh, I came, these wooden walls here, I... I built this room um, sort of out of this uh, I think I might even have dug it out at the time uh, I dug out this room and built some walls put some doors in made it long enough that the uh, the dwarf that came and dug it um, once he'd finished doing that and putting the doors in after himself so I had that door in and that door in and the dwarf came and dug out this room after those two doors had been put in and then broke that connection there. So the dwarf and child, I'd waited until it changed again and changed back again. So I knew I had a full month to work with. Uh, the dwarf and child then tried to path into my fortress. It was friendly as well. So it wasn't 
it was part of our home civilization. Um, mm. It mm. then tried to pass through these doors. So um, I waited until my dwarf passed through this door through this door to get back into the fortress and then immediately locked it <laughs> and the the child was about two tiles behind so he got trapped in this room so just locked it in this room and then went and built the um the walls either side um and then yeah about a year later the child broke down both of these two doors um i've since then i had come in here set up some cage traps and some spear traps and um because i wanted to see if with it being friendly would it walk into a cage trap uh, it turns out it will so once a weird beast won't walk into a cage their trap avoid but when they turn back into their original form they will walk into a cage um, unless they are a member of your own fortress. Uh, your own fortress people can't walk into your own fortress traps. Um, so here's my two dwarfs that are in the quarantine hospital. Uh, they both turn into weir lizards. Oh. And yeah, you can see how, <laughs> how this quarantine hospital's worked, where... I've uh, I've barred the doors and then walled them in straight after so that if they try to break down the doors they still can't come out. Um, but yeah, I'm showing this fortress to show how I'm doing the same thing here but with a much much tighter space. Um, so there's the river. Underneath the river here uh, that's the spot there where I channeled through. Uh, I did build this backwards. In fact, I should start at the well, shouldn't I? And then trace it backwards, because that's how the dwarves build it. Uh, so, my well... Here's my well. I got them to put a staircase down. And um, and because this is a this is a tower that is hollowed out of the ground, so I um, and everything is made out of built walls and built floors and things. So um, uh, I all of these walls and stuff I replace those before letting the water through. So I built the sump below the well, and then. Um, over here is the diagonal. There's a staircase. This is one below my well layer. Uh, let's see, we're on elevation 36. If I go up one to 37, there's the well. So the diagonal is one layer below the well. And then there's a staircase that goes up that the dwarves built. And it goes up to um this is the like the reservoir in like the big reservoir in my last fortress um is a tiny little room in this case i don't need the big reservoir in this fortress i haven't got the space for it but also the water here doesn't freeze so i don't have i can always top it straight up from the river but i've got the u-bend so we've got this is like that giant reservoir with the floor grate. Then um, down here, this is the the bottom of the U-bend. It's going round a corner and then it goes up again. And that's where we connect into the river. I've, um, I've got a drawbridge there. I think the drawbridge is raised at the moment. I can't really tell. I do prefer to make a drawbridge that is a one by two so I can tell whether or not it's raised or lowered. Pretty sure that's raised at the moment. I'm not sure why. Probably because... Oh, there was bodies. <laughs> that's right, yeah, there was bodies <laughs> in the river. I was trying to stop them from getting washed down into my well. Yeah, the, there's... There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of bad stuff. Because <laughs> uh, all of the killing gets 
like whenever we get we haven't had a lot of trouble on this map i've had one giant and some small sieges but it it's very concentrated on a very small space so yeah <laughs> um that weird beast once i trapped it in that room and then let it out once it was back in its child form caught it in a trap what i then did was to build the uh, built the tr the cage trap on the surface um, here I've got a goblin in a cage and an enemy dwarf and another enemy dwarf that has a goblin name um, I've just built those outside and connected them uh, to a lever so I can release these three at any time uh, so if um, if I get something around this corner, that's a bit of a problem. I'll pull the lever and it'll just release those three. And um, I don't know if I get a, a Titan or a Cyclops or a Giant or something. Um, yeah, it can deal with them. Um, and I don't need to worry about it. Um, so the next thing that I want to have a look at is um, the soap industry. Do, uh, do you guys have soap? I have soap in my fortress. It's not like yeah. the mm -hmm. best production. Like, I don't know. Like, what 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 I've found dealing with the soap production. What I found a little bit frustrating mm -hmm. is when you set up the recipe. Yeah. Every tallow gets listed separately. Yeah. So you have to like make like use this tallow and don't use this tallow for cooking and then don't use this tallow for cooking and this one and that, that i found that a bit tedious so it's not like perfect at this point because there's definitely tallow that's currently still being used as cooking rather than making soap but yeah we we do have we do have some st uh some soap in in the fort that i that i showed it's it's just down below where all of my um production units are that's where my um soap production is happening as well but yeah, there's there's some yeah, cool. soap. Yeah, I have 97 emu soap, so some water <laughs> buffalo soap, yak and moose soap. Yeah, we're we're pretty clean uh, overall, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wash that plum wine off. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, question in chat: uh, When does water no longer freeze? As soon as it's underground? Uh, yes, if you've got if you're in a biome where water freezes, then a tile that has never seen the sun uh, as long as like if you channel from the surface and then put a floor over it it'll still freeze but if you tunnel underneath and so that tile that floor has never seen the sun then it won't freeze there so yeah you've got to keep it um stop the sunlight from ever reaching that tile uh, and then it won't freeze um yeah here we've got the the three workshops that you need to make um to make soap we've got a wood furnace and that have we got a work order uh that makes ash um the ashery work order not the moment um, that is making lye and uh, I'm making pig soap ah, right yeah that's making soap oh I see how I'm doing it here right okay I'm controlling I'm just saying make soap forever um, and then I'm <laughs> controlling it's a lot of soap yeah I'm controlling how much um, lye I'm making ah clever yeah mm so that's the one of the, the there's a few fiddly things about making soap one of the things like you're saying uh fg is the forbidding of the tallow mm. and if you so you go to standing orders go to kitchen and it's under meat fish and others and you have to 
you have to kind of watch for them. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly, exactly. Because you can't just be like, oh, don't use tallow. You have to wait until you have it in stock and then be like, no, don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> and certainly early on in the game before you've got tons of food. Oh my God, I've got so many blue pea hen eggs. Um, yeah, before you've got tons of food, I'm guessing pig tallow. Yeah, forbidden them from using pig tallow. Um, right at the start, they you don't have the tons of food, and when the the kitchen is, you butcher an animal. Uh, the kitchen then takes the fat. So this is um, this is my kitchen here. The kitchen goes and takes the fat and. Uh, renders the fat into tallow. The kitchen then has a task to make some food and they pick the ingredients that are closest and in the kitchen will be the tallow so it'll be the first thing that they cook with so it's you... quite yeah? Sorry um, could you hypothetically make a dedicated stockpile with only certain tallow in it so that the um, kitchen will only pull the tallow from the stockpile so you could put the towel that you want in the dedicated stockpile and the kitchen would only pull from that rather than doing a work order that way uh you could do what yeah actually that might work so if you had because that way then you would only put can you put specific tallow in the stockpile yeah i'm thinking um let me just make a little bit of space over here. Sorry to sidetrack. <laughs> no, this is a good uh, this is a good point. And it's relevant, of course. No. Right. I've got a spot down here. Um that's free of stockpiles. So if I had a stockpile um there, it's gonna be a food stockpile. I'm going to say none except, now what does tallow come under? I That's a good question. Think... I think it must be meat. No. Is it, uh, is it? Oh, is, is it, it fat? fat? I think it is. Yeah, yep, yeah, it is. is. It's fat. Okay. So then just say whatever tallow you want mm. them to make. And because that way you don't have to wait for it to exist, right? Because those are already listed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then just it, it's gonna put tallow there, and then just pull from, have the kitchen pull from only that stockpile. Um. Actually, what we'd need to do. Yeah, this won't quite work. What we'd need to do. Mm is we needed to do it the other way around yeah for like assign mm. the kitchen a stockpile and be like don't put tallow here right so yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah gotta mm -hmm. do it that way yeah that okay way. Mm -hmm. so if you do food fat search on tallow and say all tallow mm -hmm. um and then go to the main food stockpile and, and remove tallow fat yeah tallow no tallow in that stockpile and then the kitchens I would then say uh, right this so this stockpile here um, set which workshops and stockpiles are connected so I would say this stockpile is going to Choose a stockpile to which this selected stockpile will give items. Right, so we want to give to that workshop. Give to that workshop. Okay, so this stockpile now gives to those kitchens. So those kitchens right. can only draw from the non-tallow stockpile. Yes, and so now you have your own dedicated yeah. tallow stockpile. Mm. So now you don't have to worry about the kitchens using them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think... I think that would work. I haven't tested it, but I think it'd work. What I usually no, do, <laughs> I, I usually watch it, <laughs> watch it like a hawk. Um, 
It's like, right, now is the time that we are going to make pig tallow. And mm -hmm. I'll tell my butcher to go and butcher a pig. And then I'll wait for the kitchen to make that tallow. And as soon as I see it pop up in the inventory, I'll go to standing orders, uh, kitchen, and then I'll meet fish and others, and then I'll immediately switch it off. <laughs> um, yeah, but that that might work, actually, because the kitchen, in theory, can't use the stuff that's in its own inventory. I'm not sure how reliable that is. I know when I've tried using link stockpiles with gem encrusting, they'll still take something that's inside the inventory of the workshop. I don't know whether or not mm. that would work for tallows and kitchens. Def definitely worth a try, though. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, cause, yeah, because... Interesting. I think it all depends on what the order of operations is going to be. Because, mm. like, if you make the tallow, right then it's all going to depend on how fast the dwarf is going, how fast somebody's going to move the tallow to where it's supposed to be yeah. based on what the order is that next the person is going to make a meal, right? Yeah, so, yeah. like, when is somebody going to make a meal versus when is somebody going to transport... It's going to be free to yeah. transport the tallow to the intended stockpile. Yeah. Yep. And at the start, because usually my kitchens are... At the time where I'm making soap, usually my kitchens are, are busy trying to keep mm -hmm. up with demand because at that right. point I'm still ramping up my supplies. So mm -hmm. usually my cooks are busy at that point and they're ready. As soon as they see the tallow, they're ready to cook with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the dwarves don't usually get the opportunity to move it back into a stockpile because the cook claims it straight up because cause it's the cook that renders it. So the mm -hmm. cook makes the tallow and immediately the cook then the next task is to make a meal. Mm -hmm. Um so they I, I just you claim could, it straight away. You could just queue up the you could just, you know, butcher some animals to make the tallow. Mm. Then in that period of time just take the meal thing off so then you sort of have some yeah. tallow that's then made and then put the um, make meals back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you don't have to watch it quite so closely. No, no, yeah. That would make it a little easier. Mm. As long as you have some... I mean, you have 1950 food built up for 56 doors. I think you'd be okay to <laughs> yeah, stop yeah, making yeah. meals I for mean, a bit. Here, here we're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this fortress has been going for seven, seven or eight years, I think. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it was year 250 we started. So mm. this is quite mm -hmm. a well-established fortress. Yeah. Um, this one doesn't have problems with tallow <laughs> anymore. In fact, the problem I might have is that this little stockpile here would be too small for all of the tallow. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to, for the sake of this fortress, I'm going to remove that one. And um, yeah, switch that back on because otherwise the tallow will rot in the stockpile uh, if it's not allowed there and I'll just extend this back over here again um, right cool <laughs> we should be good again now I'll just reset that back to where it was but yeah I'm gonna try that in future uh, when I've got a fairly new fortress I mean, once you've got the tallow forbidden, you don't have any problems from that point on. It's catching it the first time. Mm -hmm. um, yep. yep. And then getting getting all of this set up as well. It's like you can't make lye until you've made the ash. So you get a wood furnace, you tell it to make some ash. Um then, uh, in fact, why don't we run a batch of soap? So I'd say, uh, let's do it as a work order. Make me 10 ash. Uh, work order, make me 10 lye. And then this one at the moment is just make soap from tallow infinitely. 
Okay, I'll let the dwarfs go take care of that. I think it's training. I do all of my military training during winter when the fortress is quiet. So right at the moment, everybody's probably busy because uh, um, at least a third of my fortress is going to be doing military training at the moment. So it might take them a while, uh, but they should come up and... In fact, my, it's quite possible that my manager's busy as well. Um, I'll just speed up the game for a moment. Um, rather than doing it on the hotkeys, I shall do it from here so everyone can see how to do that. Uh, game frames per second. We'll switch that up to 60. Oops. Yep, return to game. Okay, everything will move a little bit faster now. So I like to keep my game frames per second down, usually around about 30. Ah, here we go. We're making some ash. We can't make any lye until we've made ash. So we've probably already got a can't make lie somewhere in there. I can see the make soap from tallow can't because it needs lie. Ah, make lie can't needs ash. Yeah, so once we've made some ash, ah, now they can make the lie. God, this is like more complicated than books, which is really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like books, you gotta make the binding, and you gotta make the... You gotta rollers write and everything. The rollers yeah. and everything, but like that, like once I got that, I was like, okay, I get that. But soap is just like, okay, I need to make ash, but also lye, but then... And you need the <laughs> like, kitchen yeah. to turn the fat yeah, into tallow. That into tallow, yeah. You've gotta have a butcher to turn an yeah. animal into fat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or to turn an animal into bits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honestly, as a new player, like Dwarf Fortress Wiki, thank you for saving my life. Because <laughs> Indeed. The step by step guys is just like that's what gets me through this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're having some blue peafowl tallow this time. Ooh, fancy. Mm. Yeah, mm. make a difference. A uh, bit of a change from the pig soap. Because I would imagine, like, blue fee, like, you know, blue fowl, they probably don't have that much fat in the first place. <laughs> no, yeah. no, they're not water birds, so. Yeah. Oh, no. Pretty, pretty Peace fancy. Peace, on the other hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. You, get a lot of, you get a lot of tallow out of those. Very tasty as well. Mm. <laughs> goose, goose fat. True. Mmm, goose fat on roast potatoes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm, that does sound good. Yep, and I've already had dinner. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, some blue peafowl soap being made. So yeah, that's how my work orders at the moment are set up, but it does mean that I'm getting... How have I got you set up? Yeah, just a one-time order, so that's been... Can I get you... Just check that seasonally. I don't need you to tell me every day um, that we've run out of lie. I'm pretty sure in my other fortress I've got this set up differently. Let me have a look. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. I think I just set... Th That's how I'd have set it up right at the beginning. Um, so we'll go to the soapery. I don't know whether either of you two have got a better way of doing this. Uh, oh yes, you can make soap from oil as well. Yeah, you can um, press... <clears throat> trying to remember which... Which seeds make oil which plants make oil i can't remember um i want to 
say oh god i want to say it says somewhere but i don't remember yeah because i think technically i've set it up as well somewhere let's see ah chat says it's rock nuts it's been a, a long time since i did soap from oil is it only rock nuts okay yeah, because I don't think it actually, like... Like, I technically have presses, but yeah, I don't think I actually have rock nuts, so... I just use tallow. I, have, yeah. I had so many water buffalo in this map, I think I at one point had like 30 water buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, water buffalo soap it is. Uh, you work with what you got. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Plum wine covered water buffaloes. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, right, yeah. So this is why I didn't set it up at the start. Uh, let's go back to this. So make soap from tallow. We can't choose the material that we're making it out of. And um, so to, to set it up as a repeating job, uh, and I wanted to say the amount of bars <clears throat> so the amount of soap if I want them to keep 10 soap in stock all right amount of bars thing is I've got a load of metal bars um so that isn't isn't taking account of anything um let's say I wanted to switch over to pfal so I know I've only got a small number of pfal soap bars and i'm gonna say uh that i want to keep 20 p foul soap bars in stock so if we've got less than 20 make another 10. um but it's not satisfied because we've got like hundreds of metal bars so if i go to material and say soap there isn't a generic soap. <laughs> um, I need to tell it which type of soap. No, actually, no, wait. I have mine set up to soap. I have I have done that somehow. I oh, don't remember you? how. Yeah. I Yeah, mine is just amount of soap bars. I know chat helped me with this because it was odd. I don't remember how we did it, though. Because you can't specify that it should be soap bars and not just metal bars but i don't remember how we did it <laughs> i guess this was a while ago type oh it's an adjective it's adjective adjective has soap items in it ah yeah there it is it was it was somewhere <laughs> oops and then you can specify the material so you can do um water so, buffalo soap or yeah, something yeah 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 yeah. So if I wanted to keep any soap pass in stock, I could do it like that. Uh, if I wanted specifically blue peafowl soap, uh, uh, so adjective, yeah, amount of soap bars. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> it was really convoluted because for some reason, why is soap an adjective? But <laughs> it works. <laughs> okay. Um, now, I've got more than 20 soap bars in stock, so if I was to use this one, it wouldn't make any more. Um, if I wanted specifically blue peafowl soap, um, then I'd use this one. And um, yeah, we are going to switch over to blue peafowl soap uh, for the moment. Now, I might actually because i'm moving from yeah i'd like to get my my blue peafowl soap bars uh used up actually um i'm switching over from uh from peafowl to cassowary at the moment and i'm moving from pigs as my main butchering animal to lions um because why not <laughs> I've got breeding lions. Why would I breed pigs when I can breed lions? And we're going to have lion soap in the future. <laughs> <laughs> the same with the peafowl. It's like, well, now I've got a breeding pair of cassowaries. Um, 
both provided by the elves. Um, so yeah, we'll start using up the blue peafowl soap. Okay, so now that I've got um, that as a, a condition, um, I can remove. I can remove that work order. Well, I'll leave it there for the moment. They can work through the order that I've given them already uh, until we get the until the managers check the next one. Do lions adopt owners the way that cats do? I don't know. I've got loose cassowaries running around the fortress. Yeah, I am not sure. In fact, I haven't got anywhere for the lions to go. Uh, let me just see. I've got a bunch of space here. I haven't brought my breeding lions down yet. Or do you feed breeding lions or do they just graze? Or do they eat vermin like... Like cats and dogs, cat, yeah. Cats. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, I think if you, my if lines you, are in a, in a cage. field. Do, do they just hang out there, like in a in a yeah. pasture? Okay, wow. How very uh, disciplined. Of <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, I've got a bunch of animals we can bring down here: uh, bobcat, lion, and jaguar. What else have I got in a cage? Some of these are wild animals I've caught on the surface. I'd need to tame them first. Um, leopard, lion. I've got a feeling I've got more than that. Have I scanned past them and missed them amongst the wild animals of Clot? Oh yeah, I forgot that I tamed, I, I captured a rock in this Oh, wow. and then trained it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot oh, about like the, that. Like the bird. Not, the big okay. bird, yeah. Mm. yeah. Right, not, a, big not a rock. No, no, no. Uh, the <laughs> ROC rock. Right, right, right. Not a not yeah. ROCK. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, rock, this is my huh? pet rock. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, amazing. <laughs> <clears throat> Will the lions eat the pigs? Uh, no, the lions eat the groups on the floor uh, the same as dogs and cats and uh, any of the carnivores or omnivores they they don't need to graze and they don't need to be fed either uh, they'll just eat the the vermin um, not something that we need to take care of they'll look after themselves yeah in this oh, game so the convenient. lions will lay with the lambs indeed um, can you, can you get a breeding pair of elephants? I think yeah. you can, can't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I've been, I've been trying to get that for a while, but alas, no luck. <laughs> I need otters. I want otters, but I had one map with an otter, but that was that map with the, like, 20 plus layers deep aquifer, and I just, I just couldn't. <laughs> just not worth it. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> It was just too frustrating because every like it just went entire like like the entire time just beep 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 and then like yeah we we dig this but we can't dig this and then you have to remark it and then oh god <laughs> no okay well there's my lions and tigers and bobcats and things all of these are war trainable as well um but yeah I've got um. We've got a male lion and... Oh, that's a male lion as well. There's a lioness there, isn't there? Yeah. So we should get... Uh, should start getting some baby lions soon. Uh, 
And what's you, female leopard? Oh, that's a jaguar. That's a bobcat. I know this is like Cheetah. totally not really on topic, but it's semi is. Uh -huh. Is there a way to automate slaughter orders? I don't think like where you can be like, if I have X amount of mm -hmm. chickens, kill the rest. <clears throat> there no. is in DF hack. Ah, okay. Okay. But not in the game itself. All right. <laughs> um, I've just noticed early spring. Have I got a way into the fortress? Because the elves should be here. And I usually close up for winter. Well, open the door. I'm just wondering how I've got diplomacy going on. Um, oh, the outpost liaison from the mountain homes has decided to talk to us all of a sudden. Okay. And this should have happened last autumn. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry, this is a momentary distraction. Um... I'll need to deal with it, otherwise uh, I shouldn't need any leather, I don't think. I'll get a little bit of silk. We should be okay for wool. Um, I'm always up for some wood. We'll get some pigtail seeds in case I'm a bit short. That'll do. Right, fine. Don't know what, why. <laughs> where, where did that one come from? No idea. Oh, there we go. Um, right, I'll keep this on pause because otherwise it'll start getting into the the game and distracting me. Um, yeah, but so that's how we make soap. Um, we've seen three different ways to make wells. Uh, is there uh, we're coming towards the end of the stream time has really flown by today <laughs> uh, anything that is there anything that either of you two have um, that you'd either that you'd like to share either your experience or anything in your fortress you'd like to share uh, any questions that um, you think we you might want to ask uh, I don't think I have anything specifically. No, no, not really. Um, a uh, sh short experience, um, why, uh, you know, I had to abandon the fort previous to the one I showed. Um, it is really funny to have a titan, uh, a hill titan, like, <laughs> roam your too. map yeah. on the top for two years and then basically get into a, uh, I mean, this, is, this was a bug at the time, I think. I think that's been fixed now but basically um it was fighting an echidna that was downed and it was just locked in combat with the echidna for like years because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the echidna was obviously like it was down so it was dodging and yes yeah. the hill tightened and move yeah um don't it's it's really funny at the time but it really makes everybody around you that keeps sending you you know, you know like traders and envoys and guests and visitors and bards Makes them really unhappy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so as soon as that hill titan is dead, you'll get raided. So uh, be prepared. Uh huh. Because <laughs> uh, everybody was angry with me and started a war. <laughs> oh yeah, because every time you get a trader and they see the hill titan and the battle going on, they get scared and they start dumping their stuff and accusing you. And they of get yeah, stealing they get it yeah. Yeah, and they yeah. get angry because they they um, they sent people over and they didn't come back oh. as well because they're all dead. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> they just declare war, so be careful. <laughs> yep. I, I've definitely had um, uh, traders. Uh, <laughs> I had traders unload their stuff at a at the trade depot, and then a badger started harassing them, <laughs> and then they. 
like I don't know why he was so mad. Uh, but he they ran away. They ran away and then they just left and they left all their stuff at my trade depot. Yeah. So I was just like, well, this is mine now. So I'm taking it. <laughs> yeah. If you try to sell it back to them as well, they're, they're, they're not happy. <laughs> no. No, it was yeah. just, yeah. I never sold them food. It was just all I really wanted was like the food. It just like serve, like the food and the drink, you know, like the, the booze and the, the food that they were trading me. So like. To just eat the profits, I guess. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and uh, Pirate Software says, been playing for over a decade. So proud of the team and the Steam launch, you guys. Yeah. Were. Yeah, indeed. I've, I, I mean, um, no credit to me <laughs> at all. So uh, I joined the the team as the Kitfox streamer uh, after the Steam launch. Uh, but yeah, so I've been a. a streaming dwarf fortress for um oh for for many years i've <laughs> been playing for many years <laughs> mm -hmm. uh so i'm so pleased that uh and uh, they've won so many awards as well <laughs> they deserve it yeah they deserve awesome. it. Yeah, yeah absolutely such a good game and mm -hmm. i love i love 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 the graphics love the new graphics uh, mm -hmm. It's so much easier to stream now. So much easier mm. for viewers to follow what's going on. Uh, mm -hmm. I do have my own Twitch. Oh, let's let's run through everybody's Twitches actually. Um, so you will find me. Um, I shall. I'll just do shout outs for everybody while I'm remembering. Yes, I stream six days a week. You'll find me on Salford Cell on Twitch. And I stream uh, yeah, usually six days a week, depending on whether it's a Kit Fox night. Uh, I stream a much shorter period. Rest of the time, I'm between 11 to 12 hours, depending on which game I'm playing. Um, then we shall do a shout out for... Octopin. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. I've got to wait two minutes between the shout outs. <laughs> All right. We'll do Oops. that in a second. <laughs> need to yeah. take a really long time. Yeah. I can get it ready. Twitch uh, clearly has never heard of like groups talking and shouting more than one person. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And uh, so, Octopin, what time? What times? of the day do you stream which days do you stream uh i usually stream about five six days a week usually i take saturday off um sometimes i stream saturday anyway um i'm usually <laughs> around uh six to seven pst pm pst uh -huh. so whenever wherever that is in your local time zone that's usually when i'm yeah playing things so that will be utc minus seven i think there you go. Let's see if I can give you the shout out. Yeah. No, 22 seconds. We'll get oh. there. <laughs> Come on. We'll make it. We'll make it. Indeed. We'll get there. Uh, and FG, your times and dates, uh, days that you stream. Yeah, I um, am usually live Mondays through Fridays. I start at 9 a.m. UK time, which is, well, currently that's um, GMT. So 9 a.m. GMT, which is 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Pacific, 4 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central European time. But starting next week, that's going to be wacky for a while because the U.S. is already going to time travel. Mm -hmm. And we're going to time travel at the end of the month. So it's going to be wacky for the two weeks after that. Yeah. But yeah, that's when I when I live when I when I stream usually. That that's a thought actually. I need to check. Um, yeah, when we get to this time of the year, everybody's time zones change at different times, and yeah. Australia, uh, the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere go in opposite directions as well. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at different times and everything. It's uh, yeah. You look a boomerang. Indeed. Going in different directions. <laughs> anyway. 
Okay, uh, we've got an Octo Pimp shout out in chat there. That's me. I'm sorry if you watch my content. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I've been lurking in a few of your streams recently. Uh, oh, thank you. Indeed. Good yeah. fun. Good crowd. They do like yeah. to subject you to some misery. <laughs> oh, yeah, they love that. I can't, uh, they, they really like doing that. I mean, that's. <laughs> That's that's Twitch chat though. They, that's they where love, you, yeah. Indeed, they, they love our pain. They just do. <laughs> yeah, they so true. Um, I mostly stream colony management stuff, and um, I especially like games where I can name the people that I'm bossing around after chat. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so yeah, if chat. Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, if chat tried to force me through some misery, then they're, they're dwarfs, they're, they're dupes, they're pawns, <laughs> they're, may suffer the same. <laughs> Twitch chat is always in a fell mood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely. Indeed. Um, yes, I shall, uh, we shall get a shout out to FG in just a second. But yes, you can follow from, uh, just from the stream title, but we'll get a shout out for everybody as well. Uh, so stream is coming to an end. Any questions from chat before we end? Particularly about, uh, wells and soap making. Oh, anything else we crave dwarf bone artifacts <laughs> <laughs> why why is it always cannibalism i don't know but it's always cannibalism with Trish, 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 Trish. <laughs> indeed it? yeah 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 same with mine it's like carcinization uh, it all ends up there <laughs> <laughs> there we go right shout outs to everybody have been achieved and uh, so we're going to end it here. Uh, I've got uh, a bit of Kit Fox video processing to do, and then I'll be going live on my own channel. So that'll be in about, ooh, say, two, three hours, I'll be going live. And um, yeah, thank you for joining me, Octo and FG. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so Likewise, much for having thanks. us. Thanks for having me, yeah. You're yeah, very it was really welcome. Fun. Uh, let's go see if there's somebody we can raid. Who's playing Dwarf Fortress? <laughs> <laughs>